What up, YouTube? Sal with Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. And on this channel, we talk about crowdfunding. We talk about how to raise money effectively for a personal crowdfunding campaign, for a creative project, for more of a, a tech startup, if you will. Really, any type of crowdfunding, we cover it on this channel. You even get to stuff like investment crowdfunding. But today, we're talking about GoFundMe versus Patreon. So Patreon is a subscription-based crowdfunding website, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. And GoFundMe is a very popular fundraising site online, which you can think of for like fund my life type of, type of project. So we're gonna go into the differences, the similarities, the pros and the cons today, coming up right after this. So let's talk some of the, the similarities and differences here between GoFundMe and Patreon. So GoFundMe and Patreon have really come into their own. They've become much more popular in the last several years. Um, Patreon, especially by YouTubers, have been used a lot. People that are looking to monetize their fan base, podcasters, bloggers use Patreon. GoFundMe has been used by a lot of fund my life type of expenses. You're trying to raise money for a, a travel um, abroad kind of a trip. You're trying to raise money for education expenses or a honeymoon or medical bills, uh, memorial fund, etc. GoFundMe has really become the go-to source, no pun intended, I, I don't even know it's a pun, <laughs> to go-to source for crowdfunding for personal expenses. So the first thing when it comes to GoFundMe, um, initially when they were first getting started, they were charging a 5% fee. 5% uh, fee in order to uh, do the actual service. So if you raise money successfully, you get a 5% tax on that. Now it's going to vary depending on the company, uh, the country that you're in. So fee depends on country. So some of the countries are going to be assessed a 5% fee other ones are going to be have a donate basically a donation request on the part of the supporter. So the supporter, the person who supports um, the actual GoFundMe campaign, will be asked to give money at the checkout page. So rather than being just charged, you know, five percent on your money, the fundraiser, um, the people that are actually donating to this campaign will be asked to make a contribution to GoFundMe to help with um, maintaining the website, running the staff, etc. Obviously, it costs money to to run a site with so many different people. So this is going to depend on the country. So it's very important. Um, down below, I'll include a link to the actual GoFundMe um, terms and all the rules and all that kind of stuff, and it will actually tell you for you, depending on the the, the location that you're in, which do you, which category do you fall into? So for the U.S., you know, I'm in the United States in Brooklyn. Um, for the USA, if you're doing a personal, at the time I'm recording this, personal campaign, then um, you will be assessed this type of model where your donors will be asked to make a donation upon checkout for personal campaigns. On the flip side, if you're doing something like a nonprofit campaign, or a cause, then you would be assessed the 5% fee that I reference here. So it's gonna vary, guys. Um, you gotta go and check that out on the website. I'll include a link to that down below. Now, another thing when it comes to GoFundMe is that you always are going to have a funding goal and you can have a funding duration. So the funding goal is the most important thing because that's the target amount that you're trying to raise money for. When it comes to GoFundMe, the average amount raised is just under $1,000 for a personal crowdfunding campaign. So if you're raising money from your friends and family for medical bills, you're raising money, you might see a handful of donations from strangers, but most of it is coming from your first and your second degree connections. And that adds up to be about $1,000 when it comes to a GoFundMe crowdfunding campaign. They release those statistics. Um, in addition to this, you're not really getting anything. I mean, the don donor's not really getting anything in exchange for giving money. It's really in, in the bread and butter sense, charity. So charity, um, you're, you're not gonna give people anything. You don't have to give anything. Um, it's, it's purely a donation that people are making. And they might get updates on your life, things going forward, but really you can kind of think of it, a donor is just giving money to you, handing it to you um, for the greater good or for a greater cause. And the reason why this has kind of been unsettling, I think, to a lot of people is we've seen some donors defraud it on GoFundMe. We've seen some people who have you know, made donations and gotten really angry when they realized that the money actually didn't go to the person that they thought it would. 
th these donors were defrauded. Or in other cases where you know the, the actual campaign manager takes the money and for whatever reason there's mispro misappropriation of funds or for whatever reason there's there's some you know backhanded dealings in that and it's really led to a lot of people being skeptical and disliking that. So what GoFundMe actually did is they instituted the GoFundMe guarantee. If you suspect that this project has misappropriation or misrepresentation of funds, that this isn't going to the person that it says it is or that they're lying about something, you can contact GoFundMe or if a law enforcement official verifies this or if GoFundMe itself uh, makes this assessment and they do the research and they come out that that is true, what they're willing to do is they're willing to refund your donation for the amount of $1,000, so up to $1,000. And if you are the person who is supposed to receive this funds, and let's just say someone else said to you, they came to you and they, they decided to run this campaign for you, and horribly, they didn't actually give you the funds that once they raised it, they raised 25 grand and they didn't give you the funds, GoFundMe is willing to reimburse you, the person who was owed this money, upwards of 25 thousand dollars. This is a newer initiative that they have. So the GoFundMe guarantee is meant to combat some of the negative connotations that have been sort of coming to light over the last couple of years because GoFundMe is a charity um, uh, you know, system. So you can't always verify that. So that's the GoFundMe guarantee. That's a really big thing when it comes to GoFundMe. Now let's talk a little bit about Patreon because Patreon is very different from GoFundMe. So first of all, the fee that Patreon charges on your money is 5%. And um, there's also a credit card processing fee, so it might be a little bit more than that. But um, the fee that the site is getting is 5%, and they actually, they had they had released that they might raise that fee, but it was, the, you know, their, their user base got up in arms, and they ended up not doing that. So their fee is still 5%. If you successfully raise money on Patreon, you're going to pay 5% on the money that you raise. Now, unlike GoFundMe, this is a very big, important difference. There isn't the same type of funding goal as you think about it, because Patreon is called sub subscription crowdfunding. Rather than giving money um, all at once, at one time, to help with this funding goal, maybe this $2,000 funding goal, and you're contributing once to this big pot and trying to get to that in one number. Instead, you're giving money on a recurring subscription basis. Um, as a donor, you're not just giving money once, you're giving $10 a month, $5 a month, $25 a month. Um, so this is really actually a subscription model. And as a creator, a creative type, someone making a blog or a podcast or a YouTube channel, it really gives you that stability knowing that you don't have to keep raising money on GoFundMe, you don't have to keep launching campaigns, you can actually just um, rely on the subscription-based model and can continue to get funding every single month or every single creation that you put out. And now you, you can have obviously a goal on Patreon, a goal in terms of you know the, the amount or the number of people or, or whatever it is that you're looking to for, you, for your actual campaign. You can have a goal when it comes to subscription-based crowdfunding. It just, it works a little bit differently because that is a subscription model versus raising all money all at once. Now the other big thing when it comes to Patreon is that unlike GoFundMe, you are actually offering perks or insider access. Unlike GoFundMe, Patreon is not charity because in exchange for giving money, you're gaining access to perks. You're gaining access to insider access. You're becoming a backer of that person on Patreon. And that person might put out um, live streams. They might put out exclusive content that is only available to the people that have backed them on Patreon. Um, you can basically think of this as a perk or reward similar to Kickstarter. So actually these people are raving fans. They're getting stuff in exchange for giving money. It's just not pure charity in the way that it is with GoFundMe. Now before I get into uh, which is better for you, I think, um, I just really want to quickly say that you know the, the average donation to is a little bit lower. So like, when you come to uh, crowdfunding like Kickstarter, you might think of an average donation being or average pledge being around $50. Um, on Indiegogo, that might be a little bit uh, lower. On Patreon, it's usually between $5 and $25. But remember, that's on a subscription basis, so you're getting that every single month. So this is a really great way if you want to add some stability to your fundraising without, you know, also having to deal with, oh, what's going to happen um, uh, if I'm just giving a donation, I'm not getting anything back. It really gives that perception that you're getting stuff for your money. While I have you here, I really want to quickly go through which is right for you, um, and also what are some other resources that I can offer you to help with your crowdfunding campaign. So first of all, when it comes to GoFundMe, this is going to be good for you if you're raising money for medical bills, 
if you're raising money for memorial funds, if you're raising money for education, maybe to help with your tuition, travel expenses, um, honeymoon, really anything that fits into crowdfunding for personal expenses. Um, if you had an emergency, these are all good instances of um, things you could raise money for on GoFundMe because they fit into this crowdfunding for personal expenses model. Um, so you can go on GoFundMe, you can see some of the other examples. Um, if someone needs an emergency medical procedure or a child does, you can usually see that type of campaign on GoFundMe. What you usually don't see are people raising money for businesses or to start a business or to start a blog or to support their YouTube channel or these different things. You're usually not gonna find that on GoFundMe because it doesn't really lend itself very well People don't like to give you money, which you're then going to go and take and make money with. It, it should be an investment. It's not charity. It doesn't make sense to start a business on charity. Instead, you'd want investors. You'd want to reward people using something like Patreon for their actual hard-earned dollars. So if this does sound right to you also on the GoFundMe site, I have a book called Crowdfunding Personal Expenses that I'm going to link to down below that also has an audible version that you can listen to on the go, in the car, on the way to work, etc. So I'll link you to that audible book, Crowdfunding Personal expenses. Now with Patreon, um, who is this going to be good for? First of all, it's going to be good if you are a creative type, meaning you are a blogger, you are a podcaster like me, you are a YouTuber also like me. Um, you're basically putting out stuff on a consistent basics. Maybe you're a comic you know, you're creating comics every so often. Um, this is a great way to monetize your audience if you are a creative type and you're putting stuff out regularly. So you're putting out comics regularly, YouTube videos regularly, podcasts regularly. Um, it's a cool way to create an insider community and also reward them for their support. So in, in addition to giving you money, they're also getting stuff back. So this is gonna be really good for Patreon. Um, now at the same time, this isn't going to be good for everyone. You know, if you're starting a business or something like that, it's probably not gonna be as good a fit for Patreon because you're, you're, a business usually isn't producing lots and lots of new products every single month. You're producing one product, so it's gonna be a better fit for Kickstarter because Kickstarter, you're basically pre-ordering that product. But Patreon is good if you're more of a creative type and going into these different categories, but you can also look on the website and just see and get a feel for the types of projects that are doing well on that service. I've even seen news sites, quite frankly, um, also offer this. News sites offer this to their subscribers as sort of an insider club. So there's a lot of potential for growth here and also I think a lot more categories can fit into this in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video that I put together for you and if you did find this to be helpful and educational I put out way more content regularly so take a second to subscribe and in addition I have a great book out there called crowdfunding for personal expenses so I'll link that down below below this YouTube video in the description so you can check that out it's available on audible also a paperback version um, it really goes way more in depth into the process of raising money for a GoFundMe style campaign and also so the things you need to do if you actually want to get people to check it out, to get attention, you know, the techniques, the strategies, the tools that are out there for you. Again, my name is Salvador Rigman. Thank you for your continued support, and I will see you next time.